In our journey to see every state in each other's country, we found ourselves in our 13th Mexican state, Yucatan. This state is a riot of color, flavor, and sound, and what better place to begin discovering it all than its capital of Merida. It's where colorful colonial opulence clashes with the ancient culture, and where the aroma of one of Mexico's greatest regional cuisines mingles with the sounds of live music in every plaza. It's a city that grabs you by the senses and doesn't let go. Perfect for curious travelers like ourselves. So let's dive in and discover the best things to do, the most delicious bites to savor, and the fascinating history that makes Merida one of Mexico's most underrated travel destinations. Welcome, Welcome to Merida! This video is also a part of our fundraising efforts for Miles for Migrants, which we'll share more about later. Welcome to Adirem. <laughs> that was silly. <laughs> I'm so excited to finally be in Merida. We've been wanting to come to the city for years and we've heard nothing but great things about it. And we're starting a journey in the heart of the city, that is a city center. So there's a couple of things we want to show you guys over here. The first is the Merida Cathedral, which is also known as... The Catedral of San Ildefonso. Hey, good memory. Tricky name. This is actually one of the oldest churches in all of the Americas. So you go check it out inside. As with any city in Mexico, you gotta see the cathedral. You have to do it. Let's go. Okay, we were about to get inside, but then I noticed something very funny in front of Merida's Cathedral. That is an eagle with a crown. That is, that's a symbol of the first Mexican empire. You don't see that too often. If somebody knows why, you can put it in the comments. But that's... According to me, it's from Agustin de Inturbide. That is, was the first empire in Mexico. But, could be wrong. With this being our first day in Merida, we still have a lot to learn about the history of the city, which is why our next stop is to the Museo de la Ciudad de Merida. We should learn some interesting things here. Merida has a rich history dating back to the Mayan civilization, with the city being built on the site of the ancient Mayan city of To. After the arrival of the Spanish in 1542, Merida was established as a Spanish city and many Mayan people and their culture were destroyed. The Spanish actually used carved Mayan stones to construct their colonial buildings which contributed to the nickname White City. Today, Merida is a thriving city with a diverse population of just under 1 million, with about 60% of its residents being of Mayan heritage. This actually is a very nice museum, Juliana. Actually, it's free. That's amazing. And it's only one block, two blocks away from the city center. I love it. I love the way Mexican cities are designed because oftentimes they revolve around a zócalo or some sort of central plaza, meaning that a lot of the main attractions are near each other. Like our next stop, Casa de Montejo. That's right, that is also a museum that is over here. It used to be the entire block, the house, but nowadays the only thing that is from the original architecture of the time is over here, just the entrance. That is a little bit controversial because you can see two uh, Spanish soldiers on top of some heads that it looks like uh, Mayan, so I don't know, it's, it's kind of weird. Some people they say they are demons, some people they say they are Mayans, I don't know what to think, but it's controversial. Yeah, either way, uh, definitely a reflection of the times back then. We're gonna go take a look inside, see what it's all about. Vamos! And you can see the Mayan roots in this city already. Over here we have Casa de Montejo, and I love it that it's in Spanish, in English, and also in Mayan. That's beautiful. The heritage, we have to celebrate it. is a grand 16th century mansion that is a perfect example of the unique architecture of the city. Originally built for the wealthy Montejo family, the house is now a museum open to the public where visitors can explore the beautifully preserved interior, which includes elegant furniture, beautiful tile work, and stunning decorations. Oh, 
is a cool little place and we weren't even expecting to come across this today. That's right. And a couple of the museum, it's from an artist. I don't know if it rotates or it's the same artist all the time, but it's you can see history and you can see art. Yeah, tons of opulence here and it was a nice little place to spend 30 minutes walking around. And it was Plus, free? Yeah, if it's free, it's for me. <laughs> we gotta stop saying that we're really not that cheap, but it is one nice thing about the city. A lot of the stuff has been free so far. That's right. Not only is Merida affordable, but it's also safe. We receive messages all the time from folks itching to start exploring Mexico, but still have some reservations due to what they hear on the news. Now let's be real, the news tends to hype things up more than needed, but we get it, safety is a top priority. That's why Merida is the perfect place to dip your toes in the water and start falling in love with all that is Mexico. Merida is the safest city in Mexico due to its low crime rate and high quality of life. The city has a strong police presence and the local government has implemented a number of initiatives to promote safety and improve public services. So it's cheap, it's safe, and another thing, it's delicious. And if we had to recommend one restaurant for you to try during your time in Merida, it has to be La Chayamaya. That's right, because in Yucatan they have a lot of beautiful and tasty dishes. Actually, it's one of the states that they has more influence in Mexican food. So uh, there's a lot of dishes that we want to try over here. And I'm curious, who watching has seen our Cancun video? Because we already kind of started to explore some of the food of the Yucatan in that series. But we're going to be trying even more dishes today. And we're very excited to announce that over the next few weeks, we're publishing a whole series on the state of Yucatan. Yeah, because the state of Yucatan, I think it deserves their own food video. Yes. So next week, keep watching because we're going to be sharing all the food that you have to try during a visit to the Yucatan and showing you specifically where to find it in Merida. And spoiler alert, the Chayamaya is one of them. It is, but it's not the only one. They told me the best place to buy a guayabera in Mexico is Merida. So I'm looking for one over here in the street 62 that is full of different shops. For you guys that don't know what a guayabera is, it's like a shirt made out of linen. The version that I like on how the guayabera was created it was in Cuba and it was to put some fruits in their pockets or a cigars in the pockets. Also guavas, that's why it's called guayabera. In Mexico we use it for formal attires Actually, the Mexican presidents, whenever they visit the southeast of Mexico, they use guayaberas for their formal occasions. Also, I was explaining to Juliana that every time you have a wedding over here and it's in the middle of the day or it's a hot weather, you can use a guayabera and look amazing. I'm in the hunt for a guayabera for myself. So let's see if there's one that is in a good price and something that I like. That one? Looks good. Let's go check it out. Guayabera se llama presidencial. Es casi le dicen porque normalmente cuando hay un evento que realmente es político o algo así, es lo común que usen. Este es nuestro sello. Mission accomplished. I got my guayabera in this place that is called La Elegancia de la Guayabera. And actually, Juliana also got a dress that is typical, that is very nice, that is made out of linen. We got what we wanted. Before we continue showing you Merida, we want to talk about an organization that is close to our hearts, Miles for Migrants. As some of you may know, I'm an immigrant to the United States. Although my story is nowhere near as difficult as some of the people that Miles for Migrants helps. The immigration process is hard enough as it is, but it's even more challenging for those who are forcibly displaced and don't have the financial means to pay for a flight. That's where Miles for Migrants comes in. They use donated frequent flyer miles and money to purchase flights for refugees, asylum seekers, and other migrants who are forced from their homes for a variety of reasons, from natural disaster to war, persecution, and torture. It really represents so much of what we stand for at Tourist to Local. In celebration of my two-year anniversary in the US this month, we are running a fundraiser for this charity. Over the next 30 days, we'll be donating 100% of the AdSense from this video, so make sure to share and comment so that we can reach a larger audience and get a flight for a migrant in need. If you're interested in donating to our campaign, you can find a link to their website in our video's description. Not only can you donate cash, but you can also contribute miles and points from dozens of airlines and credit card programs. With that said, let's continue our exploration of the beautiful city of Merida. We just moved to another part of the city. There's a couple of activities that we want to do over here. As you can see, this is 
very pretty. This is why Merida is known because the big houses and we're actually right now in Paseo Montejo that is one of the most beautiful streets in Merida. So let's take a look around. Paseo Montejo is a grand boulevard whose unique architecture reflects an important part of Merida's history. In the late 19th and early 20th centuries, Merida became home to more millionaires than any other city in the world due to the production of henequen, a resource used to make rope for the shipping industry. Wealthy locals even send their children to private school in Paris and combine shopping with picking them up at the end of the school year. Inspired by the beauty of the Parisian avenues, the people of Merida decided to create their own version. Today, we can enjoy a street in Merida that reflects the style and grace of Paris. We were curious what the inside of these mansions look like, and I guess we timed our walk down the street perfectly because Montejo 495 opened their gates just as we were passing by. Built in 1906 by Henneken Baron Ernesto Camara Zavala, the mansion was among the first houses in the Yucatan to have electricity. We got a tour and were in awe of the airy rooms with high ceilings which keep the perfect temperature in the hot Yucatan sun. The house is filled with original furniture, French tapestries, Persian rugs, glass, art, and sculptures. In 1964, the Barbachano Herrera family purchased the house and added their favorite antiques, family paintings, and photos, including one of the American president, John F. Kennedy, who was a family friend. Even though he never visited the house, Jackie Kennedy is said to have stayed after his death. That was so cool. They actually referred to it as the Versailles of the Yucatan at the end. And I was like, yep, that is exactly what this is. Mm -hmm. So the people owning this house used to be one of the main haciendas in Merida. That's why they were so rich. That's why they uh, was assigned by a, by a French. That's why it looks French. The marble, they took it from uh, Italy. The furniture, everything was made of it. Yeah, impressive. totally it's impressive. curated. And what's really interesting is, of course, this place is extremely old, but there's been people that were living in it as recently as 2020. That's right. It was so trippy to me to be seeing like extremely old art next to a crock pot from the 70s. Yeah, like, it's, it's a new museum. It's a new museum and uh, it's great that we just crossed by. It was a great experience actually. Highly recommend and the tour having that to go around was really useful because otherwise I would have had no idea what I was looking at. Now I want to have a game room. I'm jealous. Well, first of all, we need to get a house. <laughs> If you know a little bit about Merida, you know it's very hot. And today is very, very hot. Luckily, there's a lot of attractions next to each other, like this one, that is El Museo Nacional de Antropología e Historia de la Ciudad de Merida. And the, the tickets, they include another archaeological sites, like this one, Malinalco, and this one from Cancún, the Museo Maya. I collect these ones. As usual, as content creators, whenever we go this, we have to pay 50 pesos more to record like Juliana's doing right now. <laughs> Otherwise, you just have to pay your regular ticket that is 90 pesos. we're on a journey to see every state in the USA and Mexico with the goal of showing each other the beauty of each other's countries. But one surprising thing that we never really anticipated having to tackle when going through this series is some of the dark sides of each of our countries. And there is dark sides. Sometimes it's not fun and nice to talk about the dark side of the history for both of our countries, but we have to because we're learning. Yeah, you definitely can't forget about the past. A few weeks ago, we were in Savannah and we were talking to you guys a little bit about how slavery really shaped that city and how you can be enamored with how beautiful it looks, but you can't forget that it was built on the backs of slaves. And also in Mexico, even though slavery wasn't legal in Mexico, you have to be blind if you think there wasn't slaves in Mexico because in Las Haciendas, in the Haciendas over here in the state of Yucatan and also in my home state in Morelos there was something called Tienda de Rayas the workers they couldn't buy from another store or go into a different Hacienda they have to be over there and sometimes they have debts that their child 
they will pay or even their grandchilds they will pay. So basically they were slaves, you know, uh, and we cannot forget that all this opulency of these houses, they had a cost. Yeah, for sure. And that's a very interesting subject for me to learn about. I don't think I would have known some of those darker sides of these buildings we're seeing without having you here to teach me all this and I hope you guys understand what we're trying to say. It's not to say you can't enjoy this place but you should be aware of the past and the history and why it is the way it is today. If you want to know more about this topic you can find in Guerra de Castas because it was like a big topic and it's, uh, it's, a, it's a huge topic over here in the, in the state and the peninsula of Yucatan. Yucatan is famous for its cenotes and we knew we wanted to check off one very, very special one during our time here because you can find them absolutely everywhere. That's right. This one is very weird. It's called Cenote Cacuzal and it's outside of a Costco, like literally in the parking lot. You cannot get inside of this one, but it's very nice that you can see it from outside. It's beautiful. This is so freaking cool. I mean, I never imagined we would ever be showing a Costco in one of our travel videos, but <laughs> I think this one is worth the visit. That's right. Some people find deals at Costco, others find cenotes. Now, if we've done our job right, by this point in the video, you should be fully ready to book a trip to Merida. But where do you stay? This is where we called home during our two weeks here. I'm so excited to share this Airbnb with you guys because I think this may be our new favorite one we've found in all of our travels. The architecture in Merida is so unique. We were actually talking about how from the outside a lot of the houses don't look like much. They actually look rather thin. Once you get inside, they go way back. And this Airbnb we found is a perfect example of it, plus it has all the amenities we need. We also love that the ceilings are so high because it's hot here. So they designed these buildings so that the heat rises, let us cool during the day. The cost of this Airbnb starts at $53 a night. What a steal, especially for everything that's included. Let's take a look around. Here you can work, rest, and play all under one roof. This apartment is perfect for travelers, especially those planning to work remotely during their stay. The unique open concept of this apartment allows for flexibility and customization. You can either keep the rooms open for a spacious and communal feel or separate them for extra privacy. The apartment is also equipped with high-speed internet, suitable enough for the two of us to be on Zoom calls all day and in a quiet neighborhood that is just a few minutes from downtown. And for those who need to get some laundry done, there's an in-unit washer and dryer available. The apartment is nicely decorated with a touch of Mexican charm and it's filled with tons of guides and local recommendations. If you love to cook, you'll appreciate the fully equipped kitchen. And for those who need a refreshing shower after a long day, there's great water pressure in the shower. But the highlight of this apartment is definitely the pool in the backyard. Perfect for cooling down on those hot Merida days. And as always, the host has no idea we're making this video. <laughs> I'm gonna maybe send it to them after because I think we did a pretty good job showing this place. Uh, but we'll leave the link to the Airbnb description down below in case you're interested in booking. We don't get anything from you guys booking this, uh, but we're really excited that we found this option. Salgo a caminar al sol por nuestro On the first day we were in Merida, I was joking with Martin because like how inefficient are these benches here? And then Juliana did a little bit of research and what did you find? I found out that there's actually a very good purpose of this. There's a few different myths of what the reason is, but it seems to be that most people believe that there was a very conservative father in Merida who had a daughter going out with a guy and didn't like seeing them so close to each other on the bench. So came up with this bench idea and now they're all over the city so yeah. you can actually see each other. It's like a symbol of the city and uh, the city center is full of them. And I think it's so comical that in Plaza Santa Lucia there's a giant version of this. <laughs> that is correct, it's huge. <laughs> If 
you happen to find yourself passing through this park at 9 p.m. on a Thursday like we did a few days later, you might be catching a really cool orchestra of Yucatan music that's hosted by the tourism board. That's right, like all the tourism, international and national, they want to hear what this is all about. The place gets very busy, so I recommend you to come over here very early. Yeah, grab yourself a marquesita, find a good spot. This is where we say goodbye to you all for this video. We had a blast showing you around Merida, but make sure you stay tuned because next week's video of our food tour of Yucatan food in Merida, you cannot miss it. So long. Travel well. And make the road to neighborhood. See you guys next time. Bye. Bye.